We need to seize colon at work. We use the same high pressure water jet we use to test cardiac workload. Do it. It's kind of stuck. It's more than stuck. Val's been dead for six hours. Increase the pressure. What's that? It's a correlation. Maybe a little more pressure? It is the end and we very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 2, It's Not Cancer. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be Episode 97. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Transplant five years ago? Yes. Every other patient who had a transplanted organ from that donor is either dead or dying. One living, one almost dead, four fully dead. And in each case, serious complications came on suddenly and without warning. It's cancer. Four autopsies and about a thousand lab tests say it's not cancer. Tell them Cutner, check out the donor. Find out which cancer would have killed him. He's been dead for four years. 97 episodes into the series and they're still finding completely new cases. No wonder House is the best medical drama. So what do we know so far? Some poor guy was parted with his head in an industrial accident four years ago and he was used for spare parts, giving all six organ donations. All of the recipients are now getting unwell within eight months of each other with sudden onset severe symptoms in other organs than the one transplanted. And this started around three years after the original transplant. Considering how long he's been unalived for, hopefully they won't be digging a body up again. I'm gonna put my Sherlock hat on now and tell you there are a few things we can deduce from this constellation of symptoms. Firstly, we can assume that they're all taking anti-rejection meds as it's basically impossible that all of them would stop at the same time, which makes autoimmune unlikely since they'd pretty much be on the treatment anyway. Secondly, the only patient who didn't get sick was the one who got a corneal transplant and there's something special about that, it's bloodless. The cornea has to be like that as we wouldn't be able to see very well if there were blood vessels blocking our vision. It also means though that antibiotics given by mouth have all of zero zero chance of reaching the cornea, which is why we give drops directly for any infection there. That could mean that whatever it was that killed our first patient was transmitted via blood. That leaves infection, cancers, and possibly toxins as causes, but let's get more clues. You can check out the patient's eye. Where it is, there are demonstrative trucks. Are you checking me out? Her right eye's failing. We need to remove the eye. It's her only working eye. Problem's not in her eye, it's in her head. We're gonna have to remove your whole head. <laughs> Hallucination. That's a brain thing, right? No, none of them had brain issues. Cancer made no sense. The head and heart make less than no sense. That makes no sense. Who is he? He's apparently a very bad private investigator. Dead guy was exposed to mercury, mold, and hydrous perchloric acid. Oh yeah, that will be $2,300. It's footage of the boxing match from four different angles. Pupils were dilated. You were right. This is proof that to be part of House's team, you do need to be a cross between Einstein and Liam Neeson. You can imagine the job out of her already. Our prospective candidate should be a morally versatile doctor with interests in neurophysiology, extramarital affairs, and lock picking. What our private investigator has given us though is a new clue, neurological symptoms in the second patient. This is important as now our first patient who's just witnessed herself being decapitated by her ever so caring physician isn't alone in her neurological meltdown. We also know that the donor was exposed to mold, mercury and perchloric acid. I'm particularly interested in the last one as it isn't your everyday contaminant. I have to admit I had to look this one up so what even is perchloric acid. It's a colorless compound that's stronger than hydrochloric acid that our stomachs produce. It's actually used to make rocket fuel and for finishing furniture. At room temperatures it's generally safe but can be dangerous when heated. It doesn't quite explain why our donor's organs have gone from lifesaver to kill switch but maybe it could be his occupation that explains it. If he worked with furniture then he could have been exposed to lead paint which can cause neurological symptoms like hallucinations, memory loss and psychosis. But then so can mercury poisoning and that was 
already a contaminant. The title is It's Not Cancer Though, so I'm wondering about a hybrid cancer, not cancer condition that he could have had like Langerhans cell histiocytosis that could have caused the symptoms. Patients with the condition are more likely to get actual cancer after being transplanted too. It fits pretty well and that has to be my first diagnostic guess. Does that PI guy mean we don't have to break into people's homes anymore? He's better than we are. Cosmore, and biopsy the brain. We cut out a piece of it, good chance she's a vegetable. Do we have another patient who's almost finished with all their living? It's okay to stab his brain because he's dead if you don't. No. Give me a scalpel. Burn. He's coded. Clear. Clear. It won't matter. Patient's dead. Don't need consent for an autopsy. Brain's clean. Moving on. Each of these people were killed by one thing that attacked one organ but never the same organs. Cancer plays the field. If this thing started as normal bacteria living in the intestines, but got into a blood vessel. Ironically, we need to do a colonoscopy to confirm. Anomaly would have to be intermittent or they all would have died within a day. She starts getting abdominal pain, shove a tube up her rear before it can get away. Most people have at least some remorse at the loss of a patient, but announce it to house and the first thing he says, don't need consent for an autopsy. It won't matter, patient's dead don't need consent for an autopsy. I mean, he's not wrong, but the only place he's leading comm skills training is Guantanamo Bay. Either way, the brain biopsy was negative, House thinks it's cancer again, and Kuttner has come up with a wild new theory in typical Kuttner fashion. He thinks there's an abnormal connection between the bowel and the bloodstream through a vascular abnormality that just happens to appear and disappear faster than your ex at 3 a.m. That means they need to catch it by timing the colonoscopy perfectly when she has a bout of abdominal pain, which she hasn't had at all yet. Although it's probably tough to focus on feeling that pain when your doctor has just severed its connection to your brain using a sharp hatchet. There was a case earlier in the series with a similar pathology where a patient poisoned herself by swallowing a cleaning product in a capsule. But this type of infection is really quite rare in the gut and adults due to how thick the inner lining of the bowel is. We call it the mucosa. It's made up of these tiny finger-like projections called villi that allow to increase the surface area for absorption. The bowel also has muscles, glands, and lymph tissue to help keep it all secure, make secretions, and squeeze on command. For the bacteria to reach the blood superhighway to the rest of the body, they'd have to reach the veins, which sit deeper in the submucosa. If you have a small blood vessel abnormality, which we call angiodysplasia, then those blood vessels can start protruding closer to the center of the bowel, but usually that causes bleeds rather than sepsis, as they're still pretty well sealed, and bacteria, thankfully, haven't been trained by salmon to swim swim upstream quite yet. Some people hunt foxes, some hunt criminals, but what could be more rewarding than hunting rogue blood vessels up someone's rear cannon? I test anyone else with stomach pain. Everyone else is dead. Not everyone. You want to do a colonoscopy on a healthy four-year-old? She has a tummy ache. Does she have to be awake? We need her to tell us when it hurts. Colonoscopy was clean. And that just leaves cancer. Opening would have to be open shortly before death. We need to see his colon at work. We use the same high pressure water jet we use to test cardiac workload. Do it. It's kind of stuck. It's more than stuck. Val's been dead for six hours. Increase the pressure. What's that? It's a correlation. Maybe a little more pressure? If it is in the end, then we. Colonoscopy still showing no leaks. Nothing fits. I need you to sign something consent, chemotherapy. You found cancer? No. I was practically blind before the transplant. You gave up architecture after you could see. The world was ugly. She's better. Her heart rate stabilized, breathing's good. Amylase and triglycerides are both coming down. It's cancer. It's not cancer. At this point, they might as well be picking petals for the diagnosis. He loves me. He loves me not. It's cancer. It's cancer not. We know what we're doing. We're about as home as a polar bear in a steam room on Mars. Not. The colon experiment had an explosive ending, houses started chemotherapy on nothing more than gut feeling, and now the patient got better from chemo, but doesn't have cancer. If there are any more twists, I'm gonna need some lemon juice, which is a natural remedy for travel sickness, by the way. Don't tell Big Pharma we know. What we do know now, though, is whatever this mysterious cancer, not cancer diagnosis is, it responds to chemotherapy. You know what would respond to chemotherapy? Langerhans cell histiocytosis, which is my first diagnostic guess. There are a few other conditions, though, as that's right, chemo isn't just for cancer. Autoimmune conditions like lupus, vasculitis, rheumatoid arthritis, 
can improve with chemotherapy as well. Benign blood disorders like aplastic anemia or polycythemia rubra vera, where the blood gets too thick, could also improve with chemo. The difficult part of all that is none of them would be transmissible via a transplant. Also, keep in mind that in the modern day, all transplant donors are meticulously screened for transmissible conditions to avoid this exact situation from happening. HIV, hepatitis B, C, TB, and syphilis are all on the list. In all fairness, TB could actually cause all the patient's symptoms and be pretty difficult to diagnose unless they were specifically looking for it. The patients could have gotten it from their organ transplants and it spread to the blood after then, seeding to a distant organ. It could be picked up if they got a sample of lung secretions or isolated mycobacterium tuberculosis in the blood. Treatment is a course of antimicrobacterials over six months and she could be back to normal in time to reappreciate the ugliness of the world again. Exactly the type of upbeat attitude we want from the people educating our kids. In all fairness, 85% of people hate their jobs, so why am I not surprised? Either way, TB gets my second diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people, do you hate your job and why? Answers down below. We have to find something that walks like cancer, talks like cancer, tastes like cancer, but isn't cancer. Something's missing. I need an epiphany. You have a way of thinking about things. It's sloppy, it's undisciplined, it's not very linear. Compliments mine. The next time you knock, I'm not answering. Friends are friends, and everything else is everything else. If it's not, nothing is nothing. And anything can be anything. The world is not as ugly as she thinks it is. Did House just find a new Wilson in a private investigator? Another friend for him to pay by the hour. Seems like he once again got bang for his buck though, as we have the epiphany moment. Now we know early in the episode, our patient told House that she expected the world to be beautiful after getting a cornea transplant, but she was not pleasantly surprised. Of course, having always been blind, she has nothing to compare her new vision to. For all we know, she could be seeing the world as a Picasso painting. And in fact, that is likely. You see, when someone's lost vision for a long time and it's suddenly restored, the brain isn't ready for receiving all of that incoming light that it's about to get. It has no idea how to process it and it's likely to be a swirl of excessive brightness like you were walking out into the sun with dilated pupils from a dark room. The evidence shows that the earlier the blindness was experienced, then the more likely this mishmashed picture is to show up and it frequently doesn't improve much. House didn't just have an epiphany for an expected symptom though, so he must be onto something else. Maybe she has MS which was triggered by the eye transplant and is attacking her optic nerve, but she had no idea because that's all she's ever known. It could technically cause all her other symptoms, although her immunosuppression medicines should make it better. And it has nothing to do with cancer, so it doesn't quite fit. What if it's a paraneoplastic autoimmune condition associated with lung cancer though? The antibodies could have been wrecking the optic nerve and the cancer was there elsewhere, but far away from where the symptoms were experienced. That does fit better and has to be my final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. Brain, but not brain. To find the anomaly, I need to chop off the top of her head. Cancer stem cells are real. They explain everything. They floated around, they landed on an organ, got bathed in cytomes. They looked as if they belonged, but they weren't doing their jobs. And when they were really needed, boom, chemo shrunk them. She's crashing! Can you get it? I think so. Turns out you didn't kill her. You owe me $5,000. The world is not as ugly as you think it is. Things are gonna be beautiful? How do I look? You look sad. The tables have turned as for once it's House that's the victim of the brutality. I know he's cold and generally quite hard to love, but for the first time I really feel bad for him. It's like he was ice skating over piranha infested waters on thin ice named Wilson. He took just one stride too many and is sinking with just a life raft that's costing him about $5,000 an hour. The thing is both Cameron and Cuddy have reached out to him over the series, but he always pushes them away. Turns out the diagnosis was actually cancer, but an aggressive undifferentiated kind that is different to the paraneoplastic syndrome that I suggested, but I was really close. In all fairness, the fact that I got this wrong when the title literally has the diagnosis in it means 
I probably need to go back to med school. <laughs> Either way, brilliant episode. I'd say 8 out of 10 entertainment, 5 out of 10 accuracy as there's no way the tumor would have gotten to the part of her brain that controls vision and grew enough to affect it by the time she could see, especially as the type of transplant she got was without a blood supply. So the cancer cells would have no way of entering the bloodstream. 7 out of 10 for diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense when until you watch a previous episode where a feminist activist is taken off the road here.